Welcome back. My name is Paul Fritz, and this is putting on the Fritz 3D visualization. Um, what we're going to do in video number two today is finish up our game test area, so kind of our play area, and then um, put some textures on it. So what we're going to um, learn from this is how to take textures out of Bridge, and which is now embedded into Unreal Engine 5, and apply them to just some basic shapes, the shapes that we use for our floor and the uh, walls in our last video, and kind of learn how to, um, what a material instance is, instance is, and how to uh, manipulate them a little bit so we can change the way they look on the surface area of some pre-canned kind of models, if you will. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, jump into that. Um, before we do though, let me just say if you've, just now joining us, you can check us out, uh, the previous videos on putting on the Fritz 3D visualization uh, located here on my YouTube channel. Uh, there should be uh, an introduction video already and video number one, and we'll move forward after that. So you can go ahead and get caught up. Make sure you subscribe, and let's go ahead and stop the shameless plug and move on from here. All right. So here is our game area. Okay, this is where we stopped off last time. And got things kind of laid out a little bit. Again, now you can kind of see that when you start adding some scale to the size of your map, it takes a little bit more time to move around, doesn't it? So um, go ahead and kind of put everything a little bit neater in here. And again, our uh, camera speed, I'm gonna go ahead and bump my camera speed up just a little bit so I can move around a little bit faster. All right, and kind of gets things lined up the way I want them, a little bit better. Again, we also have the snapping that we could turn on or off if it's causing problems for you. Okay, and then the scale on this is 200, but the, uh, I'm not taking into account the width of the other parts of the model. Oh, I see why it looked that way. I didn't push this far enough over. I was like, wow, I really came up with my measurements really bad. Let me go ahead and get this cleaned up a little bit. All right, there we go. Um, and you may have some of those problems on the other parts too here. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, so we got that lined up. So let's go ahead and take a look at one of these objects. We'll take a look at the floor first, okay? Now our floor, we set it up to be 200 by 200, so it's a square, which will make texturing a little bit easier for us. It has a material signed over here, so if we take a look under our details, go down to where it says materials, you can see our static mesh, it says it's a cube, but we've turned it into a giant, um, 200 by 200 by one, so it's no longer really a cube, right? It's a square. Um, and then uh, our material down here is this basic shape material, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna put something a little bit fancier on there, right? So let's go up here to window, and then down here under Quixel Bridge, okay? And before we do any of this, Let's jump back over here to file and click save all. We wanna make sure we save everything. We don't wanna lose anything. All right, so with bridge open, and this is uh, all Quixel bridge. I have it tabbed up here. It may have opened up like this for you. If you grab things and stick them up here, you can stick them in our tab. I've left project settings open from our last time. We're gonna revisit it. So um, just leave the tab open for now. And if it's not open, that's okay. We'll get to it again. So here in bridge, you're gonna to have to sign in if you haven't already signed in. Okay, and the little login will come up. It'll ask you to sign in with whichever method you have signed in before, whichever one works. I'm gonna sign in with my Epic Games. I'm gonna pull that over here. I'm not really sure why we have to uh, sign in if we're already signed in to Unreal Engine using it, but um, Hopefully that is something they'll take note of and we'll fix at some point. And I'm hoping I remember my password. 
All right. Looks like I did. Good. And it didn't even make me do CAPTCHA for a change. That's nice. Okay. So now we're signed in. All right. And here we go. So up here at the top um, on bridge, we have home. Underneath it are some of the basic stuff that we will use. There is this 3D asset right here, plants and surfaces. Now we'll get into some of this other stuff later. And again, for interest of keeping our time, I'm going to just go ahead and jump right into what it is we want to do. In this case, I want to go ahead and go to surfaces. And I'm going to pick something for my ground. And once we click on surfaces, you'll see that there's a bunch of stuff that opens up down here. Concrete, debris, all these other things down here. I am going to want one. I thought there was one that said flooring, but perhaps they've changed it. I'm going to pick brick then. And I want something that's going to be kind of like a rough ground, maybe. I'd used a brick type thing before. This is a mossy brick floor. I'll use this. So to get it, I'm going to hit the down arrow. If you do not have a down arrow and it says subscribe, when you select this, if it says sub subscribe down here in blue, you need to go back in and uh, go to unrealengine.com. Hit the download button for Unreal Engine 4. Even if you're not going to install it again, or not Unreal Engine 4, but hit the download button for Unreal Engine. And then um, it'll take you to a page. Go in to where it says download. Hit the little blue button that says download. And um, let it download. And then when you come back in, close bridge, reopen it. You should end up with some windows that pop up asking you if you want to have unlimited access. Say yes, agree, whatever it is. And uh, there's a couple times it's going to ask you that. And then once you do that, you should be good to go. All right, so I'm going to download this by hitting that little arrow. You can also click download down here once you select it. And then I'm going to hit the export. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to select one for the walls of my, my world. So I'm going to pick something that... Gives it some interest, but um, let's see. Oh, there's some other interesting floor ones too. Maybe I'll do this painted brick wall. It's a little worn and stuff like that. That might be interesting. I'm going to download that one. And then I'm also going to export that to my game. All right, and then when you do that, you should end up with this window that pops up. And we look at it, it's on our content browser. But if we go back to our content browser, we see our content drawer is closed down here. That's basically what this is, okay? And it's in our content. So if we click on that, you can see it looks the same thing. And now it's being called Mega Scans. It's in the Mega Scans folder under Surfaces. And these are the two things I've downloaded now. All right, so a couple different ways to actually get this onto our surface but first let's take a look and see what's in this folder this is going to be my floor for my game world we have three textures this the red line means it's a texture it's also got a t in front of it mi in the front means that this is a material instance if it was just an m it would be a material the difference between a material instance and a material is that the instance is really a copy of the material but it allows you to make changes to it without making changes to the original material if that makes sense um, and if we double click on this one i'm going to do that real quick double click on it you'll see that this has a bunch of parameters over here that i can change and play around with now one thing to remember if you're going to use i'm going to close this content browser for now if you're going to use this material instance uh, in more than one place, you need to make copies of it because if you're going to modify it in any way, that modification will apply to each of the different um, objects that you apply this material to. So if you change it on this material, it's basically think of it as your original material, your original material instance. It will change anytime you change it and it will change it on everything else. So you need to make copies of it for every time you put it on something new. All right, so hopefully that's clear. Um, maybe it's not. So one way to get it onto here is if I click on my content browser, go to my mega scans, surfaces, and then to my mossy ground. If I select the little material instance, the one with the green line on it, and it's the MI in the front, I can come over here to my material and I can hit this little arrow right here and that will apply it. 
Another way to do it is to click, drag, and drop it onto there. I can also, if I hit this little arrow here, it'll put it back to the original. I can also take it and just drop it into the scene on it, okay? Now, if we take a look at it, it is massive, very big, okay? Kind of cool if that's the scale that you're wanting to go for. Keep that in mind. Scale is another way of um, kind of showing the character or the design of your game. You may be wanting the player to feel like they're a little marble inside of a giant world. And that's something you can do as well. It might be kind of a cool take on this. But uh, for my purposes now, I'm going to show you how to make it so that it's more to scale of if you were a full-size person playing in this game. So I stuck my... Uh, material instance up there so I'm going to grab that little tab and pull it off there go back to my level right here at the very top the parameters for groups now this is not every single material instance that is out there this is the way that uh, bridge has built their material instances and most of them are this way just be aware that if you make your own materials and your own material instances or you get one from somewhere else they may not be set up identical to this but they'll be similar somewhere hopefully they will have put in a tiling capability all right, and you, this is a blueprint that you actually have to do, okay? So I'm going to select the little tiling there, and you can see that... If I make this a little bigger so you can kind of see what's happening here. All right, I have a tiling X and a tiling Y, okay? So right now they're both set to 1. X is in the X direction, of course, and the Y is in the Y direction down here. So if I change this to something like 10 and hit Enter, you'll see now it's scrunched down in one direction but it's still its full length so basically what this is is this is the one texture so i go back to one this is the one texture stretched over the entire model think of it that way it's been stretched over the entire model and it's evenly stretched in both directions if i change this now it's going to change the way that is applied there are actually 10 of them in the x direction and one in the y direction but if I put 10 there as well, now it kind of puts everything back to the way it is because this is a square, it'll work out that way. Okay, 10 and 10 will make this so it looks normal again. And we can see that when we get a little bit closer down that we have this variation of our texture laid over this entire area. I'm gonna park that back up here and go back here so I can get it out of the way. But you can kind of see what I'm talking about now. Okay, and from the air, it doesn't look too bad. All right, so now let's talk about how to do this for a wall, okay? I'm gonna select a wall, and that painted one was the one I selected. So I'm gonna go back into my content drawer. I'm going to go to my surfaces, find my painted wall, and this one, I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag and drop up here. And now it's on there, but it's really bad looking because again, this was a cube that has been stretched in that direction. So in the X direction, it has been stretched, okay? and in the up and down direction, which if we laid this down flat would be the Y direction um, for the surface area, it has been squished. So now it's trying to push, basically stretch the texture in one direction and then squish it down in the other direction so that it fits. So this is where we need to fix it again. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to our material instance. I'm gonna pull it off of here so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna play with that tiling again, hit the little down arrow there, okay? And I'm gonna go with, um, let's see here, 10 maybe in the first. All right, so there we go. It's looking a little better, okay. And maybe I want it to be a little bit more. So this is the, this is the X direction. So in the X direction, we have now laid down 10 of these, but I left it one in the up and down in the Y direction. So let's see if we go with 15, what does that look like? And there you go, it's beginning to come together. I am kind of liking that, okay? And since these are all the same scale, we made them all the same scale, 200 um, by, uh, what was it, 10 high or something like that. So um, now you can just take it, this material instance, and you can apply it to all of them just like that, okay? All right, so that was kind of a real quick introduction into getting into bridge, surface, surfaces and what they are, textures, and uh, how to apply them inside of your game area so that uh, you can start adding some details and give it some uh, really cool look. All right, 
So that's it for this video. We'll pick the next one up where we will actually start making a player so that we can kind of test out our, our new uh, sample area here. Okay. And I will see you next time. Take care. Subscribe if you like what you saw. And I'll see you again.